like most of the people you listen to who do podcasts use this microphone. My mobile podcast setup for iPad users, USB-C, and Lightning. Thunderbolt. Everything you need to know for podcast beginning setup hardware? Well, let's talk about it. I have two iPads. One iPad is filming for video podcast, and the other one is my reference to monitor my levels. So that way I don't have to have anything in my ears. You could use a pair of IEMs or headphones. I'll have my Sennheiser IE800s and Clips X6Is are my favorite. And then my budget friendly pick is Apple's ear pods to plug it into one of my USB-C dongles so I can connect all my gear up. And then I also have the Apple multi-port adapter. Tip, if you're doing this by yourself, get one of these Bluetooth remote. And so that way when you click it, you can have it synced to multiple devices be the exact time. So you don't have to worry about syncing issues. Or you can of course do the loud clap and see the waveform when you're podcast editing on your iPad. Earmuffs are great if you're in a noisy environment and you're trying to edit podcasts on your iPad. It blocks out a lot of the background room noise. Is better than active noise canceling headphones in many regards when paired with like an IEM. And then quarter inch jack adapter so I can either monitor while I'm recording auditorily or I can plug in a shotgun microphone, only $20, and it has 90% of the performance of the Rode Pro Plus shotgun microphone. I also have backup audio recording, so I have a couple of these. Boya BYM lavalier microphone. These are only $20. I'll have all the affiliated things we talked about linked in the video description, but we can do TRRS and TRS signal because it has the two AM3 prongs in it. So you just flip the switch, and if you're using it, in mobile mode for plugging in directly into your iPad. You need somewhere to store all this footage and audio and edit off of because you can edit off of external drives from your iPad Pro and your iPad. These are both USB-C, but this one's the budget podcasting choice for storage. It's the Samsung T7. It's well known as a good value, but if you're looking to splash out on a, something that's Thunderbolt because the new iPads have Thunderbolt, so it makes editing so much smoother. And this has a much bigger thermal envelope. But this one's IP67 dust and water resistant. This one, you can pretty much go anywhere. I'm currently at the beach. So this one you could throw in the water and not have any issue with it. It's crush resistant, all sorts of stuff. But this is a lot more expensive than this. This is also low power, so you can edit off of it on iPhones. You're gonna need some way to power. You can just power it right off your iPad Pro, but you can just power it right off one of these plugged into the wall a lot of times. But battery bank, that's super helpful because that way you don't have to worry about external power and power outages and all sorts of stuff and be like, ah. If you don't have an iPad for monitoring and you wanna use a magic trackpad, because that way you don't have to keep on getting up to do anything you want. You can have it sync to your iPad because it's Bluetooth. And then Thunderbolt cable if you were using an Apple Silicon iPad Pro with Thunderbolt or it also works as USB-C but as a general rule of thumb I try and carry at least one Thunderbolt cable because Thunderbolt 3 slash Thunderbolt 4 can do USB but USB cables can't do Thunderbolt. If you're only carrying one or two cables, carry two Thunderbolt cables. They're a little expensive so it's an investment so I understand if you go with just regular one. If you're going with a USB cable I would just recommend Apple's two meter one. You can Go with a third party, but I've never had an issue with Apple's charging slash data cables where I've had some calamities happen in the past. And you don't want to have to go up to somebody and be like, oh, sorry, we have to reshoot this because the cable malfunctioned. This is important. You're going to need a microphone. Most of the people you listen to who do podcasts use this microphone. I use a Rode Pod mic, which is an XLR microphone. XLR microphones provide more flexibility and generally better quality and is considered the professional standard for audio recording and mixing. And then I have the desktop stand holding up the microphone. You can also use a nice absorbent area where I have lots of absorbent things so that I don't get a lot of reverb. And so that's important. But with a dynamic microphone, you don't have to worry about phantom power, but make sure that you're at least a finger and thumb away. So it's like hang loose, man, but it's thumb, mouth, thumb, mouth. But light is important. If you're not somewhere where there's good lighting, this is super helpful. It's an aperture Amaron light. It works great as a fill light or in a pinch can be used as a key light. And it's very inexpensive and budget friendly and it'll last you a long time and has really good CRI and can do tungsten and daylight. So it's really flexible for matching your lights in your wherever you're, whatever environment you're in. 
because I currently have two lamps going, but then I also have a, another light right over here. That's the filling in the extra light if you don't have the luxury of using window light because natural lighting is nice, but it changes really quickly. So if you have any questions about podcasting, leave them in the comments below. I would be happy to answer them and click here for my beginner's guide to podcasting playlist to learn everything you need to know about podcasting.